Hello and welcome to my talk, Top 30 Visualizations That Blew My Mind and Will Inspire You. This video and the links to the visualizations you'll see are at dha.io slash top30. A bit about me, I've spent the past decade making all sorts of visualizations and tools that have been covered by various media outlets. After going through thousands of visualizations, here's 30 that I'd like to share with you. We'll be going through them in categories from the quote unquote boring static visualizations to physical ones, story slash scrolly telling ones, maps, and finally, photos and videos with visualizations. But before we get to the categories, I want to start with the data visualization that got me excited about the field. Here is today is a simple interactive visualization that compares the time of to today to the scale of history. All you have to do is click. I love how smooth these transitions are and how it tells a story by simple visual comparisons. It's what I strive to do in my own work. I also really like the small touches in this case when you start talking about Earth, you've got the meteorites. And for this next visualization, how can you make it easy for an audience to scroll through random videos on social media that were taken around an important event? I think the folks at ProPublica have nailed this. They use this timeline to let people pick videos by time. And they also create this simple group location filter. And I think it's more effective than a map, which might be a little bit chaotic. So by clicking on this, I'm filtering for videos that occurred inside the Capitol. Now this interface is really simple and intuitive and I hope to see more events covered this way. First category is static visualizations that can seem boring, but these aren't. We've all seen line charts and they're often difficult to make exciting and this is a line chart of Tesla stock. Gladys Astelos has made this stock line charts far more interesting by turning them into artistic landscapes. That also provides some context like the Tesla car and rocket ship. She's made some into buildings. And in the stock chart of Ford, you can see this Ford truck here. Next, Hannah Purotrasky created an annual report that's really a piece of art. Instead of a stale org chart, she mapped out units within the company with red dots and filled in the staff with the gray and white dots that you see here. And next, instead of a bar chart, she visualized the company's Facebook posts and subsequent shares by other users. Now it's all done so beautifully and there's just so much more. Can you guess what type of company this annual report is for? It's for a large insurance company out of Poland. To pick my top 30 visits, I look for impact and novelty, and they tend to come from data insight or the experience, and ideally both. Hanno's annual report is an example of the experience drawing me in much more than the data. And then on the other hand, this next chart from the Financial Times might seem boring, but the story it tells is pretty simple and impactful. Just to quickly go over it, it's basically the weekly ICU admissions and the gray lines are ones from previous years. The red line is for COVID-19 patients in 2020, 2021. I'm always impressed by visualizations that can change people's minds and this chart at least helps to rebuke the claim that the impact of COVID-19 is just like any other flu season, at least in the UK. To me, one of the most challenging things in visualizations is communicating the scale of something like plastic pollution to people. And this Reuters story is the best one I've seen so far. You can see how many bottles people buy in an hour, in a day, in one month compared to the Eiffel Tower, in one year compared to the tallest building in the world, and finally in the past 10 years compared to the size of Manhattan, basically a mountain at this point. This is really nicely done. Again, the best I've seen. 
a bit of a bonus, it lines up really nicely with the next category, is Ed Hawkins Warming Stripes. When it first came out a few years ago, I saw it used everywhere. Now this version shows the global annual temperature change from 1.35 degrees Celsius change. For Canada, this is an example for Toronto. It's really simple and gets the point across. But what I found even more impressive, and it leads us to the next category of physical visualizations, is what people did with those graphics. Emily McNeil turned them into tapestries, and the one that I was most impressed by is Dr. Heather Price turning it into a functional dress that is both beautiful and informative. Now this next visualization comes from an exhibit called The Happy Show by Stefan Sagmeister. What you see here are gumball machines. And what I love about this is that the exhibit not only surveys the participants on their happiness, but can add to it. By taking the survey, you get a gumball. And even though I don't really like gumballs that much, the experience of just turning for one would make me happy. Like can always do with more visualizations that make us feel good. Next, I'm gonna say, hello. So this one is a visualization from Marwin Schindler, who's a master's student with his group. And with his group from Tuwin, they put together this anatomical edutainer. This is a visualization of a human hip. Uh, look closely here. Uh, do you happen to see the nerves? Basically these lines, All right? Now, next, what about the, can you see the muscles right now? What about the bones? Pretty cool, right? So here's what it looks like with just white color so you can see the whole thing together. Now, I think this experience can help to make kids interested in data. And functionally, I think you could make maps where it's okay to overlay colors on top of one another and reveal interesting insights. Next up, I love how Amy Cecil has shown us how it's possible to use our hands and Play-Doh to make our own weird visualizations. She's made a time chart for cooking meats over the holidays. It's really neat and they're complete, of course with the Play-Doh meat representations that you see over here. And then another example I really like is this rotating 3D chart that shows the number of births by time of day. If you're curious about the spike, it's basically the morning peak driven by planned C-sections. Susie Lu prototype visualizations into our everyday receipts. You can see what was spent by the categories by this bubble chart here. And the bar charts show the relative price to the most expensive item. In this case, it's the steak. I think this is going to really lead into interesting visualizations like number of calories bought for the food. And for our next section, this is story slash scrolly telling. Scrolling telling is a storytelling told by scrolling, and it's an increasingly common pattern used by news outlets that want to meld data visualizations into stories. I love this particular one from Reuters about countries with aging populations because it's just so simple and elegant. The colors of the gray match the story being told, and this experience shows us the percentage of the population above age. 65 and in countries like Japan and many others projected over in the future. So this is really simple, straightforward, but just elegant and beautiful. Next, this concept of telling parallel stories for the scrolling televisualization from the University of Surbrook is really quite intriguing to me. Uh, there's a bit too much here. But basically, you get to see lifetime taxes and benefits of a woman called Ella when she is single, which is these basically what's happening on the left side. When 
she gets married and has two kids, which is what happens in this deviation here in the middle. And what happens if instead she separates with her partner in this last one and she becomes a single mom. Now, at the end, you see the net benefits or negatives each woman gets, whether it's the single parent, um, Emma, like I said, it's a bit much here. When it's the single parent, Ella, receiving more benefits as a single mom with a child before the age of 18, or all of them become beneficiaries when she receives pension plan benefits. It's very data heavy, but I like how they try to show three different lifetimes in parallel to contrast their financial situations. Next, this visualization from The Guardian is interesting because of how they visualize party votes like living cells that split, merge, and move around through what looks like osmosis. I just like that organic nature of the visualization when in most visualizations like these called graphs, they push away from one another in a mess that makes it difficult to compare sizes with. And instead, this one kind of draws lines and again, looks kind of organic and really engaging. Next category, maps. Everyone knows maps, loves maps. Now this visualization from The Economist is probably the best sound visualization I've seen because it combines sound with the map in 3D. So in this way, you can hear and see what happens. And you can see what happens when someone scores a goal. And then what happens when the fans chant to one another? Now next, I really like how simple this visualization with contour lines by Alexander Varlamov is. It animates through the height of this mountain in Hawaii and it's quite pretty. The more interesting thing is this was put together with Tableau. And I know a lot of people in the nonprofit and the government side use Tableau. And this is an example of how you can make beautiful things with it. Up next, a 3D carrot map that shows the production of carrots in France by Romain Lacroix. It's made with carrots. It's one of those chef's kiss visualizations. Just simple, just great. Now, sometimes the most interesting way to make data different is to visualize it differently. Now, in this case, Jacob Wasilskowski turned the intensity of light into height. So basically, the light that you see at night. And he's created light hills and mountains on the globe. You can see major cities. I'm going to first go to North America. So you can see out east all of these uh, light areas. And then as you start to move west, you really want to rotate this a little bit differently. There we go. Then you get to see places like um, Calgary and Edmonton, Vancouver, Seattle. Probably the most interesting part of the map to me is actually right here where you see this, basically this border between South Korea. You get to see the light that's there versus in North Korea. It's just Pyongyang. It's kind of fascinating to see just how to see that difference right there. Now, I've seen many subway and train visualizations, but this one by Jan Willem feels like cells in a living organism. Instead of using fixed points that don't move, he allowed the speed of the trains to change the distance to their destination, and it looks like electrons moving between cells. 
especially later in the day. There you go. It's a lot more visually engaging than other trained visualizations, which was why I thought this was fascinating. So did you know we have 18,000 asteroids in our solar system? Eleanor Lutz created this map showing them, and I love how she showed some of her initial sketches and attempts to make the map legible, including using log scales for the size of the asteroids. Even more impressive, she open sourced the whole project so you can create the visualization yourself if you want. Finally, for maps, and I'm a bit biased here since I worked on this project, but I'm very proud and impressed with the Opportunity Atlas from the Opportunity Insights Group in the US. It uses anonymous data following 20 million Americans from childhood to their mid 30s and shows how neighborhoods affect people's social and economic mobility. It combines maps with scrolling and just the ability to visualize hundreds of millions of data points instantaneously. Another thing it can do is zoom in to any city. And I'm just going to go to New York because I know it's the largest concentration of tracks in the US. And basically it's like our dissemination areas in Canada. What I can do is I can just zoom in and I can look at which neighborhoods have helped the children of low income families grow out of poverty by looking at their household income today. So I'll pick the ones with the highest across on this map and which ones a few blocks away made things worse. So the difference in income is quite dramatic, 62,000 and 27,000. Uh, there's also lots of data about things like incarceration rate, teenage pregnancy. And the thing I like most about this tool is just the impact it has in helping city and state planners across the country. It's also just been selected as a museum exhibit for scientific data, and it's just something I wish we could do for Canada. Finally, we have the category for photos and videos of visualizations. Now, this visualization from Quartz shows how high-end retail has changed because of COVID-19. There's Oxford Street in London where some stores are closing, other ones are getting converted. And then uh, you keep going. And there's other streets that they look at as well, including Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. Now, it's not the same streets, but the Washington Post's visualization on economic on, on unemployment feels more impactful to me. Uh, there's some data up front. They also include the photographs of storefronts with annotations on how the virus has changed things with respect to uh, employment. It feels more relatable, more personal. And next, the New York Times article about how two children from different economic backgrounds in India experience pollution, it just takes it up a notch. By using video shorts of children, you feel like you're taking glimpses into their daily lives and are more vested in their stories. I like how they've added in kind of a slightly moving line chart about pollution levels connected to the portion of the day that it relates to. And as I go down, you can see them just starting their day, and it kind of makes sense where. Uh, you see things like, in this case, there's less pollution for the car, in the car for the girl, in the same way, when she has less pollution as well, as uh, she's inside a closed classroom compared to the open one for the boy. I think New York Times, yeah, they've done a great job with this. Another example comes from Alec McLean, who talked about collecting and visualizing health data. Now, despite having plenty of data and knowing that he was eating food that was hurting him since he is diabetic, he talked about how the data felt like health reports he kept failing and just would not care anymore. Instead, using photos of his wife and images 
of car crashes to remind him of the possible consequences making f bad food choices and driving. He found that it was more effective in helping him make the right decisions. Now, it wasn't always bad with good choices resulting in cute videos of happy dogs. And he ended his talk mentioning that knowing the data itself was not enough. It's about knowing the people we design for, and I think it's a really good point here. The final example in this video takes that point further with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation's scrolly telling experience on the impact of COVID-19. Now, most of us are aware of the numbers and the impact. We know a lot about the data, but here they use relatable photos of empty streets and buildings while highlighting how through world wars and the Great Depression, streets have never been so empty. Don't have any movies or live shows. You have abandoned playgrounds. And then you also have deserted public transit like this. Businesses that are empty, offices as well, with schools too. Now, sometimes numbers and charts are not enough, and photos can help us relate to the impact the data presents. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the 25 visualizations so far. There are five more that are separate because they cover more sensitive issues such as suicide, rape, and different attempts at visualizing data on COVID deaths. You can find that video and this one, along with the links for the visualizations shown so far at dha.io slash top 30. Well, thank you for going through this video. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. My email address is right here. And till the next one then.